Well, we left you with a little bit of a problem the last time, but let's back up a bit. We're going to derive, derive a, an expression for the uh, variations in the acceleration due to gravity associated with a horizontal uh, cylinder, a simple geometrical object, and uh, you know, as representative of some geological feature, which which would be approximately uh, cylindrical in shape. Uh, if we're running our survey along the length of the cylinder, we really aren't going to see any variation. So the anomaly, the, the uh, um, solution that we want to obtain is one which describes the shape of the anomaly. Uh, when we cross the cylinder, when we cross perpendicular to the axis of the cylinder. So we'll be running our uh, survey across the axis of the uh, cylinder, assuming normal to that. And uh, so x is a point, uh, x is a, our um, x coordinate is, is um, relative to a zero location, which is located directly over the center of the cylinder. Uh, r would be the distance from the gravimeter to the center of the cylinder. And z again would be the, would be the depth. And we see a, a familiar expression. There should be a V in here because this is the vertical uh, component. And uh, I don't think they're coming after me, but I think we're good for for a moment. Uh, so the the uh, first term is the maximum value of the acceleration due to gravity, and then the shape of the anomaly is described by this term here. And we said, well, you know, why don't you come up with the um, a value of x over z at which the anomaly drops to one half of its maximum value, where this is the maximum value. Uh, we'll come back to that later. So how do we go about uh, deriving this expression? Well, we're, we come back to Newton's universal law of gravitation again. Remember, with the sphere, no integration required. We just had um, a rho dv, dv was 4 thirds pi r uh, cubed, basically the v volume, where that r is a capital R different from the distance from the center of the sphere to the point of observation. In the case of the horizontal cylinder, we have a differential mass, and uh, so we'll have some density times a differential volume. So that makes this integration a little bit more difficult. So we'll uh, maybe, maybe a little bit more like that for the vertical cylinder and the horizontal plate, but not or the infinite plate, but but not quite. So so we're assuming that the cylinder is um, an object that we might use to represent a geological feature like a cave passage, a tunnel, or an anticline. So you can kind of imagine, you know, if we had an anticline and uh, so a lot of the mass is concentrated along the axis of the anticline. So we could kind of, we, we could estimate what the depth to the um, anticlinal core of the core of the anticline was uh, using uh, horizontal cylinder as an approximation. So this would be the geological application. This is our integral. Uh, we've just expanded into a Cartesian uh, dv, which is dx, dy, dz. Um, m is a distance from the point of observation to the, actually should be down to the center of the object. Uh, so we could be on either, we'll show this in, you know, in the next slide. So we could be in and out of the board here relative to, a, this is not the minimum distance. This is not the point, necessarily the point directly over the cylinder on the surface. A couple other uh, variables. We have uh, r, which is the distance from the point of observation, to the right side of the differential volume element. This is our differential volume element here, a little inner tube, if you will. And then r plus dr to the distance to the left side of the volume element, which has a thickness uh, dx. So just looking at it, uh, taking a different perspective, if we're looking down along the length of the cylinder, we just see the circular cross-section. M is a point off to the left or right. It could be over here, could be over here, could be right over. But the point is that it's not necessarily 
uh, a point directly above. It's not necessarily the minimum distance from the surface down to the center of the horizon, uh, the center of the cylinder. So this is the integral that we want to uh, evaluate. And um, <clears throat> again, we need to take the vertical component. Um, dy dz, we can just uh, let that equal the area, the, the cross-sectional area, the area of a circle. And uh, being interested in the vertical component, we're, we've got to multiply this by the factor cosine of theta. So we get the integral rho times the cross-sectional area times dx. And our dy dz is just the uh, cross-sectional area here. So. so this is the integral that we have to evaluate. We know what a is. It doesn't really contain terms which are a function of x. Uh, taking a close-up, you know, kind of zooming in on that differential volume element, the uh, area, pi r squared. <clears throat> the cylinder has a radius r, capital R. Uh, differential element has a length, dx. And at the surface, the kind of the left and the right sides of this differential volume element uh, subtend an angle d theta, and the arc length, we assume that we're far enough away from the source, it's way over here somewhere, or from the point of observation, that we can approximate this arc length as a straight line with length r d theta. <clears throat> so we have this triangle, this would be the angle theta, and r d theta, so this side over here is uh, uh, just going to be uh, have a length dr, but we're interested in the cosine. So the side adjacent is r d theta over the hypotenuse, which is dx. That's our uh, cosine of theta term. That's our dx term. So, so we, we need to find a substitution for dx in the integral here. And uh, dx is basically just r d theta over cosine of theta. So we've got our dx, it's equal to r d theta over the cosine of theta. We substitute that into this expression. So we have r d theta over the cosine of theta times the cosine of theta. Remember, we're taking the vertical uh, component. And this is just equal to gravitational constant times the integral of um, a d theta over r. This is not a subscript here, this is just, you know, we're noting here that r is equal to m over the cosine of theta. So we end up with this integral over here where we have rho a d theta times the cosine of theta over m. Okay? So a little, little uh, juggling around here in order to, to get this m and in, back into the equation. And uh, so the only variable left for us is the uh, d theta and we have this cosine of theta d theta. So we have um, the vertical component for this configuration here, where m is not, a, not necessarily a point directly above the cylinder. It could be off to the left to the right. It's not the um, point directly above the, that has the minimum distance to the center of the cylinder. So we have uh, g density times the density times the cross-sectional area over that distance times the integral minus pi over 2 to pi over 2 of cosine theta d theta. So you might take a second and uh, and integrate that. If you do, uh, you know, we just end up with the sine of theta. Remember that the derivative of the sine of theta is equal to the cosine of theta. So we can do that kind of cross check there. We're evaluating it from pi over 2 to minus pi over or minus pi over two to pi over two that gives us two. So the vertical component then at this arbitrary point located at a distance m from the axis of the cylinder is equal to g times two pi r squared the cross sectional area times the density or delta rho or rho divided by this uh, distance. Now what we need to do is calculate the variations across the cylinder. So in other words, we found out what the vertical component is at this particular location. 
Now we need to do it for all points along a profile which is drawn normal to the axis of the cylinder. So we haven't quite gotten to that expression that we uh, showed you at the beginning, but we're going to do that next time. We'll, uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, we're we're going to redefine M as R now so that we're going to be coming across the normal to the axis of the horizontal cylinder. And so that M will change to R. So we're kind of renaming M now because we're talking about a different problem where R is the distance along a line or along a profile or a transect which is perpendicular to the axis of the cylinder. And so R would be equal to M would be equal to uh, the distance from the point of observation to the center of the cylinder. Z, the uh, depth. But remember now, yeah, we took the, okay, we took the vertical component just, just before. Uh, that was for the, uh, you know, all the differential volume elements that went in and out of the um, screen here along the length of the profile. But now we have to take the vertical component as we go across it. So we're going to have to scale this with uh, cosine theta term. And uh, so, you know, the next time we're just going to complete this derivation, um, kind of go ahead and turn that on. Um, <clears throat> we have uh, the vertical com component, but remember we need to now take the vertical component along this normal profile, so it does get a little bit con confusing here. Uh, we did let m equal to r, and uh, we want to get the variations of vertical component of gravity as a function of x over z, or just x, uh, shown in the diagram over here. So we'll uh, take a look at that next time. Thanks for joining us. See you then.